Let's talk about securing your software supply chain. First things first, what do we even mean when we say the term software supply chain? Regardless of the scale of software and services that you ship, it all starts with your developers writing code. And the code they write eventually becomes the applications that are accessed by your users. The software supply chain then is a set of systems and processes that are used to get this code from development all the way to production and to your users. And this includes more than just your code, but also things like your builds, your packaging scripts, your dependencies. And dependencies can be especially tricky because if you use external dependencies, each of those also has its own software supply chain. The whole of these systems and processes can be complex with many moving pieces that reference not just your code, but everything that could possibly affect it. This complexity opens up opportunities for bad actors to compromise your software's integrity. If you cannot verify explicitly that the code you run has not been tampered with, your customers are at a greater risk and you can lose trust in your business. Securing your software supply chain is a holistic approach that's focused on applying principles and practices to protect your software's integrity. The systems and processes we need to apply this strategy to generally fall across four key stages of the software supply chain, code, build, store, and deploy. Your software supply chain starts in the beginning of the first stage in your software's lifecycle, writing source code. This is when developers write code and tests in IDEs on their workstation. Once they've completed functionality, such as features or bug fixes within their code, they'll usually push to a remote source code management system. New code changes pushed to these systems usually triggers the next stage, building a deployable artifact. Typically, this process is automated, and the build runs as a unit of work across some set of workers. And those workers do things like run tests, pull in external dependencies, and produce an artifact such as a container image. Once this deployable artifact is produced, it's then pushed to long-term storage, like a registry. Your pre-production and production environments have access to pull artifacts from here. These environments know when to fetch these artifacts based on pipelines that orchestrate their rollout through the practice of continuous deployment or continuous delivery. Across these stages are intertwined IT systems and human processes, each of which can be vulnerable to potential attacks from bad actors. History gives us examples of these types of attacks that can occur across these stages. Bad actors can attempt to write malicious code or code that is subject to vulnerabilities like SQL injection and push this to the company's source code management system. They can also inject malicious instructions into build pipelines, which they can run as arbitrary and untrusted scripts, or they can even build artifacts from other malicious source code that isn't yours. With external dependencies, Bad actors can access vulnerabilities in transitive dependencies or even take advantage of dependency confusion by either typo squatting or compromising the latest version of a package. Even if actors are not able to access your source code management systems or your build execution platform, should they have access to your artifact storage, they can then build their own malicious artifacts out of band and push them to that storage. And because the storage is how your environments access artifacts that must be run, actors can now reference these bad artifacts in CI-CD pipelines that are ultimately responsible for your software's deployment. Across all of these scenarios are also network perimeters and infrastructure that must be secured. With multiple attack vectors along every step of the way, software supply chain security must be a holistic effort at every single stage. Security can no longer be only a focus of where your production code runs. To practice software supply chain security, you must shift security left across the entire software supply chain, as early as when your developers start writing code on their workstations. Best practices can be pushed left into the developer experience, such as securing workstations and providing in-context vulnerability scanning, and building both automated policy checks and human review into the code review process. This can extend to the build stage as well, with practices such as automatically generating a software bill of materials to document what dependencies are used, starting with secure defaults like providing a standard and minimal base image for containers, all while ensuring that build configurations are auditable, treated and reviewed as code. As that code begins to flow through the stages of your software's lifecycle, it is also important to establish the authenticity 
of what is produced at every stage. This means explicitly providing proof that an artifact came from a specific source repository and was built in a specific environment. This proof should be used further down the software supply chain for a couple of reasons. You can continue to add details about the artifact to this proof from checks such as vulnerability scans and artifact repositories, and you can also enforce policies around this proof automatically at deploy time. This enables you to maintain trust all the way through admission into your production environment and can also enable you to go one step further and perform continuous runtime scanning. This process of establishing verifiable and maintainable trust is one that must flow seamlessly across multiple stages of the supply chain. This practice can look like creating crypto signed attestations that prove that artifacts were indeed built from a trusted source repository in a trusted build environment and were scanned for vulnerabilities by a trusted party, all with the ability to define auditable declarative policy that controls whether or not these artifacts are admitted into an environment based on these attestations. Finally, across all these stages, a secure software supply chain that implements these practices will not only have discovery of potential compromises, but the means to remediate issues quickly by pushing updated build configurations or updated policies through code review. As software supply chain security continues to evolve and develop, we recommend reviewing SALSA, which stands for Supply Chain Levels for Software Artifacts. This end-to-end -end framework provides a rubric to help you determine what level of software supply chain security you have implemented. As you begin to strengthen your software supply chain security, SALSA is helpful in that each level makes incremental jumps to an ideal end state with actionable steps you can take to get from level to level. The optimal goal for a secure software supply chain is to pair the SALSA framework with rigorous vulnerability detection and remediation processes. To learn more about how Google Cloud can help strengthen your software supply chain security, check out cloud.google.com slash software dash supply dash chain dash security and stay tuned for more. Thank you.